Greetings everyone, this is Sean Dyer coming to you today in my beautiful backyard on uh, one of the last remaining really nice days that we have here in central Ohio before it gets cold and wet for a little while. And I have my tent set up and I thought I would do a demonstration and talk to you guys about the art of wet shaving out in the field. Now before we begin, um, I'm coming to you today dressed up as a Civil War surgeon. Uh, I like to tell people that I don't have any formal medical background, I'm not a nurse, a doctor, or uh, someone who works in the hospital or anything like that. I have CPR and first aid training, um, but I'm actually an educator. I teach high school social studies and government. So um, what I present to you is based off of my own research, reading, uh, and experience, um, and I talk to you like I do my students. So uh, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, my loving family, for their constant support. I would like to thank all of you who decided to watch my video. Uh, maybe you'll like it and subscribe to my channel and watch some of my other videos. Uh, I hope they're informative and useful to you. I'd also like to thank my incredible students who are always keeping me on my toes. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I would like to thank other educators out there. Um, today, I want to dedicate this video to my good longtime friend, Anthony. Uh, I hope you watch this video and you enjoy it. And I'd also like to dedicate it to uh, Sergeant ha uh, Howard. So <laughs> thank you. I hope you enjoy it as well. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Axel Ulrich because one of the 10 pieces I use today is an incredible 10 cup. Uh, I love it no matter how much I beat up on it. Um, it still is a quality cup. So if you're looking for quality tinware, check out Axel Ulrich and his tinware. Uh, he's on Facebook. He doesn't have like a formal shop or anything like that. He's a regular busy guy, but everything he puts out is a piece of art. So uh, there's my gratuitous plug, <laughs> shameless, uh, from a brother from another mother. All right, so I am going to take you in to my wall tent. Now I did another video that talked about officer's tents. Um, this is my backyard, so I apologize for any noise that you might hear or uh, my surroundings. It's definitely not a very formal place whatsoever. But we're on a lockdown, so we're doing do with what we got. So this is my wall tent. We're gonna go in there. Uh, I'm gonna settle down and talk to you guys about wet shaving. Okay, so this is the inside of my wall tent. Um, I could do several videos just talking about the various things that are in here. Um, I'm a major, so I would, generally speaking, have a tent to myself. Um, not necessarily always a wall, just depends on um, what the wagons were available at the time. Um, it also depends on the army, depends on uh, the campaign situation. I might have been sleeping underneath uh, a hospital fly or uh, maybe even an ambulance wagon. So it just depends. But anyhow, this is my more stagnant setup that I have. And I have my officer's field desk here. And inside my officer's field desk, I keep some of my personal belongings. And as you can see, these are some of the implements that we're going to use today. I'm going to talk to you about one, talk about each one individually. I'm going to set you down here. All right. So the first thing that you need if you're going to do some wet shaving, especially out in the field, and I guess you don't necessarily need it, but certainly going to make your shaving experience a lot more comfortable. You're going to need some really hot water. Now, you don't want boiling where it's going to scald you, per se, but you want it um, almost to the point of boiling. Next, you're going to want a shaving brush. Now, if you're shaving brush, just go ahead and drop that in the, the hot water. Now, a commenter on one of my videos said that another shaving brush was made out of horse hair and he's right and I completely forgot. I am sorry that I, I didn't mention that in my personal belongings video, my toiletry kit and hygiene. Uh, horse hair brushes were pretty common and they would also, generally speaking, have wooden handles because those are going to be your cheaper brushes. Uh, if you look on eBay and you look for shaving brushes, sometimes you'll find what's titled or labeled as shaving brushes when they're actually old paint brushes. So a horsehair shaving brush, their head is only going to be about three inches long. Um, take out my my now wet shaving brush to show you. 
So as you can see, that's about two inches there. So no longer than really three inches. Uh, and again, the handle is going to be made out of wood. Um, so thank you, whoever you are. I appreciate the uh, the comment, and I'm always willing to correct myself. So you got your horsehair shaving brush. It's getting heated up in your hot water. You're also going to want to take a huck towel. You're going to want to put that in some hot water and let it get heated up really, really good. Okay. Then, in your kit, you want to have a strop. Now you can use your belt if you that's all you have, but a formal strop is always better. This is an original strop from one of my other videos that I showed you, a Criterion strop. Um, you don't have to carry a razor hone. Um, I carry a razor hone just because sometimes when I go to an event, uh, some other soldiers, they ask me to shave them, and I usually have several razors on me at once, so I can disinfect them when I get home. But um, this is a razor hone. You're going to want a puck of shaving soap. Now, there are two varieties. Historically, they did have shaving sticks, okay? Um, they weren't terribly common, though. The most common is going to be your puck. So even if you're an officer, chances are this is probably what you're going to use. And this was given to my buddy, Anthony. Now, the puck of shaving soap is going to be pretty much like a lye soap, except it's also going to have um, an ingredient called glycerin. The glycerin is what's going to give you a nice, rich, thick lather. You'll want your hairbrushes or comb or something else. That way you can make sure that your beard is out of the way and trim yourself accordingly. You want a mirror. I have two different types. The bigger the mirror, the better. But it, after you do some wet shaving for a while, you can pretty much do it by feel, uh, almost blindfolded. I Generally speaking, when I shave out in the field, I only take the mirror out just to double check to make sure that I got all the areas. Um, the blade is generally about four inches long. So it can cover quite a bit of an area, and sometimes you miss some. So you always do two passes, and we'll talk about that. You'll want a cup. This is my lovely Axel Ulrich cup. It is incredible. Take your cup, puck of soap. You're going to drop that in your cup. And you're going to want, you don't necessarily have to have it because not everybody had it. And it was more of a luxury, is your uh, toilette or what we call today is um, uh splash on or aftershave and we'll talk about these when we get to the end of it all right and lastly the implements of destruction the tools of the trade you're going to want some, a straight razor i carry two with me generally speaking because sometimes um even though i'm pretty good about keeping my razors sharpened uh, sometimes i'll get out in the field especially if the water's not super hot and if my razor isn't honed to pristine sharpness, it can be rather uncomfortable. So I always like to carry at least two razors with me. Generally speaking, if you're a soldier out in the field, you're probably going to carry one. Yeah, you know, it's just more weight and one more thing to keep track of. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take off my jacket and get ready here. So wet shaving or straight razor shaving, I've been doing it for like six years, right? And I have very sensitive skin. Used to get razor bumps and all that jazz. So I decided to go to straight razor shaving. And it is and can be a hobby all in itself. People sometimes poke fun at me and I get harassed um, that I am, I, I kind of have women characteristics, female characteristics. Like, uh, you know, you're always um, talking about all these hair care products and stuff. And there's some truth to it. Like, Women get a lot of flack for spending so much time in the bathroom, but um, really, historically speaking, shaving was a uh, ritual. It's a man's ritual, and not as till as of late, more recently, since the 1940s, 1920s, uh, after the two world wars, did speed for shaving really become uh, more of a necessity. Because a lot of those guys, they were in the military. Um, they're out in the field. We went to the safety razors, and we're just looking for more disposable. Let's get it done out of the way. Um, it, but also, the trend happened that men had to shave, like, completely off. You're not just 
cleaning up the lines and, and looking nice. So there's some of that that goes into it too. So uh, to shorten what I was saying there, I do actually have more hair care products than my wife between uh, beard balms and uh, pre-shave oils and uh, after skin products and stuff like that. You know, like I said, it can be a hobby all by itself. Uh, I do, but it's because I enjoy it. All right, so I took off my cravat, took off my vest and everything. Um, generally speaking, you would do this possibly with a shirt off. That way you're not getting messy. But I'm not going to take my shirt off. I'm going to leave it on. So you're very welcome. All right, so now I got my hot towel. Again, you want it really hot. And honestly, you want it hotter than this. But we're going to use what we got. Once you have your hot towel, you're going to fold it. Depending on what area you're going to shave with. I'm going to put it back in for a second. You want to apply it to your skin as soon as possible to keep that heat in. Okay. You're, I only shave my neckline, which is right here, my chin line. Um, I tend to keep my beard on even in the summer. It's natural sun protection. I get burned pretty easy. So you cover your area that you're going to shave with a hot towel. Um, you're going to leave it on there until it starts to lose its heat. As soon as it starts losing any heat, you want to take it off and you want to put it back in the water, let it heat up for a few, bring it out. And put it back on. Okay. Now you got your cup, you have your puck of soap in there. You got your shaving brush. All right. So while leaving that on there, I'm going to make some circular motions on the puck. And the whole point is to build a lather. If it doesn't have a lather, then you're not doing it long enough. You might need a little bit more water, too. So you just kind of got to play with it. If you do get too much water, you can dump out a little bit. But um, also, the more you stir it up, it'll dry out. All right. So as you can see... There's my lovely brush. It's got some lather on it. Pretty much there. You don't want it too dry because the soap will dry out on you. All right. So now I'm going to apply the soap in circular motions in the area that I'm going to shave. Now this is also going to contribute to softening the hair. There's a ton of shaving videos out there. If this is something you really want to get into and they go into more specifics and um, more detail, but this is just a shaving out in the field video to show you how to do it in case you want to try it out. I strongly urge you to. All right, so now you take your straight razor and you're going to get it ready. Now, if you do have a, a hone, we're going to start there. Um, Maybe you haven't honed it up a bit. Take your brush, soap, put a few strokes on there, and you're going to make what's 10 total strokes, kind of in an X, because these are really narrow hones, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to wipe the soap off on my towel. Got another dry towel. It's always good to have at least two. I generally speaking, keep three towels on me. Um, if you're a lowly soldier, you might only just have one and you dry it off on your pants or something. Okay. So with your hone or with your strop, you're going to do the opposite of what you did on your hone. On the hone, you're going to move forward. On the strop, you're actually going to move backwards so you don't cut into the strop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. So 20 to 25 will do it. All right. 
Now, your neck is probably drying out a little bit, so grab some more soap. You want to make sure it's wet. It starts drying out on you, add it. Because that wet, that moisture is what's going to help the straight razor um, glide. All right. So now I'm going to start here. Now each person's beard is completely unique. If you go to a barber and the barber's not asking you what direction your hair grows, truthfully, they should because the comfortable shave is going to depend on what direction that your hair goes. Now, they might be able to look underneath, but if they don't say, hey, do you have any tough spots or something like that, then just let them know. My beard... Um, for the most part, goes one direction on this side, but on this side it goes a completely different direction. If you have really curly hair, it could be even more difficult. Again, I've been doing this for several years, so I kind of know where to go with it. Um, I do have my mirror here, and here in a second I'll, uh, I'll take a look and I'll check it just to make sure I got the right area. Um, the angle of your straight razor, you want to keep it at about a 20 to 30 degree. Anything less than it's not going to cut. Take your time with it. Don't add pressure. If the hair is pulling or you have to add pressure, then your angle's off or your straight razor is not sharp enough. Okay? It should be very comfortable, easy going. Yeah, as you can see, on this side, I actually go upwards instead of downward. On my second pass, I'll actually do opposite. Once you do it a few times, though, at an event, I mean, it's really cool to do it out in front of spectators. Uh, people always have questions, especially younger kids who've never seen someone take a knife to their neck. All right. So let's see how we did. That's the spot right there. But, I mean, I got most of it. So I'll get it on the second pass. All right. So again... Lather up, make sure that you have plenty of water and soap in there. You got your brush lathered up. You're gonna put it in the circles again. Okay, now the second pass is just to get leftover remnants pretty much, but it also gets a little bit closer shave. All right, so I'm gonna go opposite of what I did last time. Then, once. Get there. Switch it up. Not in a rush. Get the angle right. Now, this area right here is actually a trouble area for me. So if I were to go down the opposite, like last time, then I guarantee you I'll get uh, some spots, some like razor bumps, etc. This one just kind of curly cues and gets really weird. So, instead of fighting it, I'm just going to go the most direction, the most comfortable direction that I can which is back up. All right, so let's see how I did. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right. So you check your work. Everything looks good. Take a towel. 
dry it off, get the, some of that soap off. Take your wet towel. Now, if you're at home, cold water is actually better for this because what that does is that closes up the pores. I only have hot water, warm water, so that's what I'm going to use. I guess I could use water from my canteen, uh, but it is what it is. It's okay. Out in the field. Okay. So I wiped it up. Now, if you did your job right, you can take your aftershave or uh, toilet water, that's what they traditionally would call it, and you can apply that. Now let's take a minute and talk about aftershaves because um, perfumes or colognes were more common. Aftershaves really weren't really around. Um, aftershaves hold a very specific role and that is to not only um, kind of disinfect, but also to close or be a bracer and close the pores and everything so you don't have the effects of razor bumps and everything. They make uh, lotions pretty much do the same thing. Witch hazel, if you have that, is a very natural um, use to put on your skin. It's an astringent, so it'll uh, help you with any razor bumps that you might have. If you are going to go with an aftershave, historically speaking, there were a few options. Your average soldier really wouldn't use them because they're going to be kind of expensive. One that you can still get is called Panade Clubman Aftershave Lotion. Panade's been around since 1810, so it fits within the time period. But again, probably not the most accurate. Sailors on ships came out with their own... Uh, smell or scent and it's called bay rum now you can make your own bay rum take some rum take some bay leaves you want fresh bay leaves you want to put that in there and you want it to ferment for a while after you do that then you can string out the um, the bay leaves and use the actual rum in there uh, to use as a aftershave all right so i have Bay rum. This is Panade. And this is probably the closest that I've seen if you're wanting to go with a more historically accurate just rum and bay leaves. Um, it does a good job. And that's what I actually have in my little glass bottle that I carry with me to my events. So I'm just going to put some bay rum on there. Rub it in. And apply that. All right. So there we go. Now, if you did your job, really good as far as getting that angle right and having a nice uh, sharp straight razor you're not going to feel that that stinging or tinging um, it's always a good idea to stay up on your shaving because if your hair gets out too long and then you try to shave with a straight razor it's going to do more pulling than actually cutting um, so the more regular that you shave the easier the shape will be the more comfortable the shape will be all right so now you've done your work on your face, you still have to do some after work on your straight razors. You need to dry your straight razor, rinse it off, dry it again. What this is going to do, the soap scum that's on it is going to be rinsed off, it's going to be wiped off, so you have a nice shiny straight razor. And then you're going to take your strop, and you're going to do it like before. To save the video though, I'm not going to count this time. Just going to go back, forth, a few more, just so you get the general gist. All right. Then you should always have some oil. This is mineral oil. Um, you can use any type of real oil that you want, that you have available. Oil, no matter what it is, will keep rust away. I have mineral oil. Put that on a towel. Take your razor. And if you are wanting to get into this at home, having mineral oil, most people have mineral oil even in their um, home cabinets because it's a laxative. <laughs> You can use it for a couple different purposes. All right, so I wiped it down with oil. It's ready to go now. I can put it away into its leather slipcase, and it's good to go. 
All right. So there you have it. That's my process for shaving out in the field. It was a nice, beautiful day today. It was a perfect day to do it. Uh, like I said, I already have my tent up from the other video. Can't, went camping with my boys over the weekend. And that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys are getting out uh, during this time of lockdown. And if you're watching this after the lockdown, which would be really cool, uh, I hope you're having a good day. And maybe you'll get out in the field or get into wet shaving uh, as a side thing. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you have any questions, make a comment. Um, I always appreciate good feedback. If I messed up something, then let me know, and I'll apologize for it on another video, and I'll try to correct myself. As a teacher, we're always reflecting and trying to adapt and get better. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something. I hope it was something of interest. Um, please like, subscribe to my channel, share it. I'd appreciate it, uh, and make a comment. Let me know how you're doing and how I'm doing. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Give a kiss and a hug to your loved ones, and I will catch you guys later next time. Take care.